Hey, what's up, everybody? So this morning, Google uh, experienced a bad issue in which um, user access to their services was not working, right? Uh, for a lot of people, they just said YouTube was down, Gmail was down, um, YouTube TV or whatever other YouTube or Google services that they had were down. The reality is that those services were not down, but your access to those services through your user account was down. And so I want to talk about what was actually going on. And um, this is really just more of a, a conversation. I want to start with other people who are interested in getting into engineering, software engineering, because I think this would be a good case study to help people understand what it is that they need to prepare themselves for, for a major corporation the size of Google, which is one of the largest corporations in the world, that even they can have some technology problems too. So my background is I've got over 15 years of professional IT experience. I got a bachelor's of computer science. Uh, and, you know, I've been doing, I've been dealing with computers for pretty much majority of my life. And I work for, um, I've worked for a lot of major corporations and I've seen a lot of major problems. So I want to go ahead and just kind of walk you guys through those who are interested in the troubleshooting of IT. This is actually how IT gets troubleshooted. And this is just based off, off of, of my experience and the, and the little bit of evidence that I saw this morning personally and that I saw on Twitter as well. If you guys want to hear more content like this, then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I want to definitely help educate people as much as possible on this platform. And I would love to have a good conversation with you guys down below in the comments. So please go ahead and subscribe, like, and let's engage. Let's talk about what you guys think your theories are or what your opinions are based upon some of the things that I've seen too. All right, so let's go ahead and go. Um, the first thing that happened this morning when I woke up is that I checked my YouTube, right? Because I got a notification that I got some information or some likes or whatever. And when I went to it, it was it, it wouldn't work. It said it was not working, right? That was literally the, what the app said. I then went to my Google, my Gmail, and my Gmail wasn't working. I went downstairs and I went to YouTube TV, and my YouTube TV was also not working. What I found out after going on Twitter, because Twitter is the best news breaking uh, app in the world, is that people in India were experiencing uh, YouTube down or Gmail being down, and they were complaining about that. Um, what I've been able to see based upon my experiences and, and other people's um, posting of evidence online is that the Google account service was down, but YouTube uh, and the other services weren't down necessarily. But obviously you can't access Gmail without being able to log into your Google account. So that's why it felt like everything was down. But in, that, in reality, your user access to that was down which in turn mean you couldn't you couldn't access your emails and stuff like that. Um, but why would something like this, how could something like this happen to a company as big as Google on a massive scale, on a worldwide scale, right? And this is interesting because um, the way things break on organizations is it's not like what you see in movies per se. It can be something really simple, right? Um, that just happens to be unnoticed and therefore breaks a bunch of things. One of the first things I thought about was, was there a hack? Did, did Google get hacked? And to, to understand the, the number of servers Google has all over the world, for them to be hacked to that scale, to where it affects India and the United States, that would be a major hack. And I, I, I thought about it and I said, how could you do that, right? I don't think that this is a hack or necessarily a security breach. And the reason why is because we haven't seen emails or, or notifications that said that for one, your password was incorrect, right? So if your password, um, the verification of the actual account login doesn't say your password was incorrect. We never got that. What we got was that you couldn't even log in. So if you think about it from a standpoint of of steps. The very first thing to getting access to Google is to first hit the web server or essentially the services that allow you to send your credentials to Google. And then once they get to Google, Google will then have a verification service on Google accounts that probably validates whether or not your stored um, credentials and stored encrypted credentials actually match up with what they have. And since 
we didn't get any kind of um, bad password messages and we saw mainly 500 messages which are like bad server something's that down with the web server or something like that um, that led me to believe that this wasn't about security or verification that it was about just being able to reach the login service. So you have to, as a software engineer, you have to understand that there are things broken up into different components. And there are probably teams that work on separate components uh, from an agile methodology as far as like what they actually own from a product standpoint. So if you don't know what agile is and you're in college, you need to do some research and learn as much as you can before you enter the corporate workforce because a lot of engineering has moved over to agile as far as a software delivery life cycle. Now let's keep it going, let's go back. So if we if we can say that nobody got a request to reset their password, uh, attempted failures at password login, then we can say that verification or the verification service wasn't being hit. So then it's the login service. So now we've, now we've taken this massive problem, this massive impact to the customer, which is YouTube not being accessible, Gmail not being accessible, YouTube TV not being accessible, all these different platforms, right? And you have to say, well, how do these platforms all come together? It's Google accounts. So now we know Google accounts not being able to log in is where the problem's at, right? Now you've, now you've identified that. But what's interesting is that this happening in the United States and in India, we don't share, I would imagine, this is an assumption, I would imagine that Google does not share their servers um, for the United States or have their Indian uh, accounts or worldwide accounts be shared like that. Um, so if something were to happen in a different part of the world for a company as big as Google who has servers all over the world, you have to think like, how could that happen? And one of the, uh, the easiest ways for that to happen would be with a software release on that service. That's not something we're gonna see as users, right? That's something that Google, Google knows and Google probably will never tell us if there was a, a bug, a software bug that got released in their, in, their, in their platform that caused this issue. But this is how you can determine whether or not something like that happened. Um, Usually with rollouts like this on Google, they'll scale it up, meaning that um, it doesn't 100% go out to every single server in the world that uses that particular application, that particular platform, right? So what happens is it will, it will scale up. So if it looks good, if the service, if the software release looks good, then it goes to a higher percentage of usage and so on and so on until finally it gets to 100%. Um, Sunday mornings for a lot of major corporations are when they deploy a lot of big software releases, okay? Because it's the beginning of the week and it's just, that's just kind of how it is, okay? Sunday mornings and Monday mornings and things like that are usually how things get rolled out. Something like this with that type of a rollout makes me think that something may have gone in a few days ago, if not a week ago, gotten ramped up and they realized or they saw that it brought down the services capability all over the world. So how do you resolve that? Well, the first thing you have to do is isolate where the problem is, like I went over with you guys. But once you isolate it, they probably were told to roll that back. Whatever change that was, roll that back. And it seemed like around 730 this morning, Eastern Standard Time in the US, they rolled that back. That's my assumption as to what happened here with the Google account service and particularly their login service. Because I remember too this morning when I looked at my Google account services, they all said signed out. When around 7.30 this morning, when I looked at my Google account services again, without doing anything manually, they all had signed in and I had my, all my logos back for my different accounts. So, that right there seems to be what it was. I can't imagine, again, a web service is going down for, for the U.S. and for India and other parts of the world. I can't imagine that being a shared thing, which makes me think that this was some type of uh, a release. Now, it could also be patching, too. There's also the possibility that the OS that the service is run on was patched, and that broke it, too. But typically, patches don't happen 
um, in that layout for that many servers. And this is why I'm thinking it was probably something released in their last um, software update for that particular service on their side. That's where I'm leaving it at. So if you guys, um, actually, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that, that, that this makes sense? Do you think that there was something else at play? If you do, go ahead and comment below if you agree or you disagree or if you wanna add on some more theories there. And maybe by the time this gets posted, there's gonna be more information, right? Right now, it's pretty early in the morning. It's like eight o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. And um, this is really interesting because this is, this, is really, this is really what happens with business. Um, we can talk about really quick, we can just talk about really quick what will happen with, um, how can something like this happen? Just, just to quickly explain for people who are not in IT. With um, agile methodology, especially agile, right? You have this concept of teams, right? You have these teams that own a product. They're with engineers. Um, this is just a generalization. With engineers, you have some engineers who they they focus on their specific product. They know their product, but they may not know how their product links into other products that are part of the experience of using the company's service. What does that mean? Well, that means that there could be a team that works on the authentication piece of Google accounts, but doesn't work with the front end of it, which is the login piece, or the verification end, which is the you know security piece. Perhaps they're just doing stuff in the middle. So you can have a bunch of different teams that support a product to the public, right? The Google accounts product to the public. Um, in doing so, as an engineer, you have to always remember that you're working on something that's a piece of a much bigger picture. You may make a change that you think makes a lot of sense, but ends up breaking something two or three steps down the line, or even before it, where you've now broken the, the flow of something just from not knowing. So you have to understand something that I was always taught is that you need to understand the big picture when it comes to technology. You have to understand that you're doing technology as a business and that you don't want to do something that's going to impact the customer's experience because Gmail not being accessible, YouTube not being accessible and et cetera, that's money, guys. That's That was probably millions of dollars, if not, um, hundreds of millions of dollars that Google as a company could have potentially lost if not did lose over those amounts of time that they were uh, down, right? And, and then you have the other part of there's PR, right? A lot of companies are going to react to this and they're gonna freak out because their platforms all depend on Google. So the fact that um, Google can go down, if you're if you've got so many things invested in Google to run your business, you know how would you have done business this morning? That's that's going to have a, a reaction here where people may actually um, decide to diversify their uh, information, their accounts, so that they don't have this issue happen in the future. That could end up costing Google a lot of money. So something like this, can definitely impact you and make you feel as though you really don't have um, trust from the general public in your services. So I think Google's going to be pretty Teflon as far as reserve, you know keeping most people, especially people who who use their services for free. They're going to probably keep most of those people, but I think businesses need to um, will probably look at this and say, you know, we need to diversify here. And make sure that we're not, um, you know, putting ourselves at risk by putting too much dependency on Google. Now, that being said, it looked like the Google Cloud platform was fine as far as the services and stuff being up there from the companies that I know that use that. So, um, again, this seemed to be a Google's like Google Accounts thing, but Google Account is like the spaghetti junction. All of your access to your specific things goes through Google accounts. Google accounts does the verification and it says you are who you are and it, it, it allows you to go to these different platforms. And that's one of the that's one of the cool things about Google. 
but that's also one of the tough things about Google. So it'll be interesting to see how um, this comes back and um, how the, the technology world responds to this. So I know this part of the video has gotten more into long-term um, vision as far as what you can do and look out for it as an, as an engineer, a young engineer specifically, right? And I really want to use this platform to help educate people um, to improve and show that, you know, technology is not really hard, guys. It really just comes down to simple inputs and outputs and conditions. Conditions being whether something's in a good state or a bad state, right? And it's kind of like you keep on adding more and more pieces to the chain. Well, you, you still need to understand from one end to the other end how this works. And that is going to help you guys be great engineers. And um, I mean, at this point, I just, I'm probably going to stop talking. So if you guys like what you heard, again, subscribe and make sure you like this video and uh, share it if you want to. And I look forward to talking with you guys in the comments. Peace.